But today, the tank, containing five million liters of water, is being used to look into the past to evaluate what happened to the Edmund Fitzgerald. It's a scientific first, an experiment never undertaken here before. The test replicates the range of wave heights the Edmund Fitzgerald actually encountered during her final hours. Running 20% lower in the water, the Fitzgerald would have been swamped by even the storm's smaller eight meter waves, stressing her hull to its limits. You can see a lot of the waves are coming up over the deck here, and we know that there were damaged ballast vents and things, so there's definitely gonna be a lot of water getting into the hull. But data from the NOAA team says a wave towering 17 meters or higher could have struck the Fitzgerald. So let's make it happen. That's okay. There's a big one. There's our road wave. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That, that was pretty washed over. The, that's yeah. right, yeah. There, the whole boat was yeah, that, washed. That pretty well washed it from one end to the other. High-speed footage shows the rogue wave in all its deadly power. It towers over the stern of the ship, striking high on the pilot house, an impact that would cause damage the Fletcher saw in the HD footage of the Fitzgerald. Here's a big one. <laughs> Here it comes. Look at that. Picks the stern right up. Yeah. Rolls right across the whole deck and then just shoves the bow right under. Look under at that. Room. Yeah. jam the wheelhouse straight under. Right. These ships, they're designed to take big seas. They know there's going to be big storms up there, but are they designed to take that freak, you know, one in a million rogue wave? The team have seen what the waves likely did to the Fitzgerald on the night she sank. Next, they plan to apply their data to the ship itself using a unique machine. 